Today, I want to talk about a difficult aspect of the twin flame journey, but an element that absolutely needs space. It needs space to breathe, to be discussed, and to be understood. And this is something we refer to as twin flame soul shock. This is the period of time immediately following the first, what we would call, separation, usually in the physical form of separation, between two twin flames who have just experienced some kind of energetic merging. So usually this occurs when twin flames have met, have gone through what we refer to as the soul merge, which I've created a separate video about that today if you'd like to explore more about that topic specifically. But this is what comes after that soul merging, that initial separation, and then what immediately follows. It's hard to put into words, but it's a reaction, an energetic reaction that occurs within us when we connect very deeply within all seven chakras on a very core energetic level to our twin flame, especially and most usually in the physical world. And then it feels as though those connections in all seven chakras are immediately and simultaneously severed through separation. And of course, they are not severed. They can never be severed. I only say it feels that way because it tends to look that way to all appearances in the ego mind. The way the ego sees it, we have been totally separated from our twin flame in some way. So this could be because of a great physical distance, so we may be so physically separated that our ego says, they're gone, we're separated, we're alone. This could be an emotional separation, so your twin flame says they no longer want to see you, maybe you were dating and they no longer want to be with you, or they choose to date someone else or engage with a romantic third party, or this could be a communication separation. So when they stop talking to you or start talking to you less frequently or your communication is blocked, either literally as in they blocked you or metaphysically, you just aren't able to feel as though you're connecting the way that you used to. You aren't communicating as frequently because of some energetic emotional disconnect. All of these can be different forms of separation and can all result in this soul shock. So I'm going to get into some of the most common symptoms emotionally and physically and even symptoms that occur in the physical world around us that we experience during this period of soul shock just so you can know if you are currently experiencing this, what is happening to you because one aspect of soul shock is it is often so confusing why we are feeling these things in this way and to the degree that we are feeling them. But first, I just want to share with you that if you are going through this period of separation of soul shock, it's so common for our ego to want to step in and to see things on the external world and even to blame either ourselves or the other person, either in self-judgment or in judgment of others, which are really both the same frequency, the same thing. So during this time, it is especially important that we find a way to energetically ground ourselves and clear our energy. And not only that, but find a way to begin participating in our own inner healing on this journey. Because truly the twin flame path is a divine path meant to set us on the course to our highest healing and our highest purpose and potential, both individually and jointly with our twin flame. But this joint journey isn't external. 
Although we so often externalize it, we look at the physical circumstances or the way our relationship with our twin flame looks on the surface. But this isn't just a relationship in that traditional sense of that word. It's a connection. It is a journey. It is a journey that happens within. In order to come into a harmonious, balanced union with our twin flame, we must balance and harmonize within, specifically balancing the divine masculine and divine feminine energies within us, and also simultaneously clearing away those negative subconscious blockages, those negative belief patterns stored within our literal energy field that come from the subconscious mind. Oftentimes these come from childhood wounds, ways in which we were rejected by our caregivers, by the ones we relied upon, and then we started rejecting ourselves. We accepted those negative patterns as our own, and they became so natural to us that we started just unconsciously playing them out until finally they became so unconscious we were no longer aware of them. This is why I am so passionate about subliminal affirmations tracks because subliminals are designed to bypass the conscious filter of the mind and alter these subconscious thoughts, these unconscious working parts of the brain that continue to play out these negative patterns and set up these walls within us almost on autopilot. I have created a website with over 100 subliminals for all areas of life. I've created subliminals for physical body changes, for appearance, for relationships, even attracting a specific person, for money, for energy work and confidence, happiness, literally for anything imaginable. And specifically, I have several subliminals designed for twin flames. The one I would most highly recommend and the one you see on the screen in this screen recording here is my 7 chakra twin flame clearing subliminal designed to clear away and dissolve any energetic blockages within the 7 chakras that are preventing full harmonious twin flame union and that inner balancing that has to take place within us before this union. You can access this twin flame subliminal as well as every subliminal in my library completely free for seven days when you create a trial account on my website. The link to this subliminal is in the pinned comment of this video as well as the description box. So let's first talk about why this twin flame soul shock occurs. Because let me tell you, when it happens, it will most likely completely catch you off guard. Oftentimes, despite all of those powerful, intense feelings we get upon meeting a twin flame, there is this feeling that comes from the ego that tells us, okay, I'm feeling all of these intense things about this person, but I've gotten over so many other romantic partners in the past. Why would this be any different? I will move on from this person. I will be able to get over this person. Of course, your soul understands throughout this entire process that that is not true. This is a hard pill to swallow and I'm not trying to sound negative, but you do not suffer a twin flame connection. I do not believe it is possible to sever this connection. Prior to meeting your twin flame, yes, you are capable of experiencing other romantic connections, many of which could be very beautiful and some of which could even be soul connections, soul contracts like karmic partners or soulmates. But once you meet a twin flame and they awaken that thing within you, that core of your soul, that authentic self within you, and you experience this depth of connection that I often compare to the Marianas Trench of soul connections. The Marianas Trench is the deepest point in the ocean, and likewise, the twin flame connection is the deepest point of connection you can possibly feel with another soul. And besides that fact, when you do meet 
there is an intensification of the bond that has always existed between you, something we often refer to as the soul merge. Once this soul merge occurs, usually within that first physical meeting, although it can occur before, when you and your twin flame look into each other's eyes and recognize one another for the first time, but also realizing it's not the first time that you've recognized each other over and over in lifetime after lifetime that you've lived together and at the end of every lifetime you said, I'll meet you in the next when you realize that about a person, you don't just move on and forget them, even if your ego tells you that you're going to. And let me tell you, if you think that your twin flame, because they're the one that's separated, because they're the runner, that they are going to just forget you, that somehow they have escaped the depth of this connection, this is your ego speaking. This is not true. Twin flames experience the connection and the intensity associated with it in equal parts. However, usually the twin flame that is considered to be awakening first, more awakened in the beginning. This is also most often the divine feminine and also most often referred to as the chaser. Usually one twin flame counterpart awakens first to forge the way for the other who also does awaken equally, just sometimes in a delayed fashion. But because you are the one who is more energetically sensitive, energetically attuned, more so-called awakened, aware of the spiritual metaphysical, aware of the impact of energies and feeling it more, more in tune with your own energy body, although you are receiving equal parts of this energy, you and your twin flame receive it equally, you experience it more, more profoundly, more intensely because your twin flame may be more capable of repressing it, repressing some of the signs and symptoms. They are still feeling it, but they are still able to shove it down. You, on the other hand, have become so awakened, so energetically attuned and sensitive that you are feeling all of it. You have let go of so much of the illusion of yourself and of this world and of this matrix that you aren't capable of repressing what you are feeling energetically as much or to the degree that perhaps the twin flame runner is capable of doing. And also you must know that this is temporary. They will not be able to repress this connection forever. No one can. And as they continue along their own awakening journey, again, it is usually somewhat delayed from yours, but as they continue on this journey of awakening, they will find themselves less and less capable of repressing this connection until they are feeling it as intensely as you are. And in some cases, this can even cause the runner chaser dynamic to change places where they become the runner or they become the chaser and you become the runner. This whole explanation is just to explain to you why, because I can already sense that some of you are going to have this question, this doubt, how am I experiencing this soul shock when my twin flame isn't? So I just wanted to explain a little bit about what was going on there. So again, usually this soul shock happens after that initial physical meeting. Although if you did experience a soul merge with your twin flame at a distance, it can really happen at any point, any point of contact where there was some merging that took place of some kind. So maybe you connected in a very profound way online, virtually, maybe you just had a glimpse of your twin flame that was very profound, like you passed them on the street, you made eye contact with them. Maybe you even had a very intense lifelike dream about them in which you were able to deeply connect with them energetically enough to experience a sort of merging. Whenever this merge happens for you and you recognize this person as a twin flame consciously, we then experience this soul shock during separation. So where does this feeling of soul shock come from? Well, technically, it's coming from all seven chakras simultaneously 
Because again, although your connection with your twin flame isn't being severed through all seven chakras during separation, your ego really does perceive it that way because they see this person as physically absent. I also think, and I've said this before in prior videos, I hypothesize that part of the reason this soul shock hits us so deeply and profoundly is in part due to the contrast. Meeting your twin flame, I often say, is like realizing that you had this limb that you never knew existed and then separation is like amputating that limb and as many of you know when you are an amputee you can still feel phantom pain where that limb used to be and it's often equally if not more intense than when that limb was there so I feel that part of this soul shock comes from the drastic contrast in energy, that feeling of profound connection on all levels, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, being in the presence of this authentic, true, deepest soul connection, and then suddenly, sharply, drastically, feeling immediately cut off from them. This will shake you to the very core of your being. It will shake you through your entire energy body, through all seven chakras. You will feel it, not just energetically, but even manifesting as a kind of physical pain. It may cause your body to literally ache. It may cause you to feel what we call soul sickness, fatigue, tiredness, unexplainable illness, just feeling this unshakable sense that something is wrong in your body, even your physical body. This soul shock could be described also as a deep grief, a grief that runs even deeper than grieving the death of a loved one, which sounds dramatic, but it is true because when you're grieving a twin flame who has separated from you, you are grieving a part of yourself a part of yourself that was awakened through this soul merge, through this deepening, intensifying of this connection with them in the physical that you've now lost, you will feel, if you feel as though your twin flame is rejecting you through the ego's eyes, through this cutting off, through this separation, through this dating another person, you will at the same time feel as though you are rejecting yourself, like you have lost not just a part of yourself, but a major part of yourself, even half of yourself. Part of yourself that you weren't even aware you were capable of knowing until you knew this person. And part of why this soul shock happens is because prior to incarnating in this lifetime, your soul carved out a path, predestined a path, with this other soul, with your twin flame, you destined to have these other fulfilled karmic contracts if you had them in the form of other karmic partners to experience all of these specific life circumstances that would all lead you up to this climax point in the story. And you will feel it. You will feel as though this is the greatest moment, the most profound moment of your life when you meet your twin flame and experience this merging of your souls. And then all of a sudden there is this drop off and you will feel on a soul level as though something has gone very wrong. And in a sense, you are correctly reading the situation because you are divinely intended to be with this person. Every cell of your being is being drawn to them and in fact has been drawn to them your entire life up until this point you just didn't know what you were being pulled to until you were looking into the eyes of this person so this results in what we could refer to as a paralysis a paralysis at every layer of our being Sometimes this immediately manifests as a physical paralysis. When you first separate from your twin flame or they separate from you, you may physically feel unable to move. This may be incapable to get out of bed in the morning or physically you may feel as if there are sandbags 
tied to your feet, like it is impossible for you to put one foot in front of the other physically. You may find that your entire daily routine is completely interrupted, that you can't get out of bed, that you can't go to work, that you can't function at work, that you can't exercise. Do those things that you used to find so natural because your body just feels a heaviness, an emptiness, an absence, as though it is hollow. And hollow is really a good word to describe how everything will start to feel to you. When you look around at the world, you will feel depersonalized. You will feel as though you are seeing this shallow, hollow world around you that you can no longer connect with and that really doesn't even make sense to you anymore. This is because your twin flame through your meeting and especially through this soul merge has touched the very deepest point within your soul, has stirred something within you that you didn't even know existed, that has existed and been with you lifetime after lifetime, that eternal part, that eternal core of you. And suddenly every other connection and every other facet of your life begins to look so shallow and hollow if you aren't doing it with this person, if you aren't sharing life with this other soul with this identical soul frequency, with this person with whom you've merged so deeply. It's hard to see the purpose of all of those things you used to pursue. This paralysis will be most pervading though, emotionally, because emotionally you will find yourself having so much difficulty connecting with others in the ways that you used to. Because again, there is such a sense of emotional loss, and this will especially play out in your romantic life. You may find yourself completely disinterested in any other romantic connection because again, they all look so shallow by comparison. You cannot imagine your life, your future with anyone else. And I feel that someone needs to know this listening. I just feel guided to say, that your twin flame, if they're running, if they've separated, they can't imagine their future with anyone else either. And they want you to know that, but they can't say it and they maybe can't even accept it to themselves. But the truth is, even when a twin flame appears to be running, appears to even be pursuing a third party romantic connection, know that this is them trying to escape the core of themselves which they will carry with them everywhere they go. And the more that they wake up, which is inevitable, the more they inevitably wake up to that core of themselves and experience this awakening, the less they will be capable of repressing what they are feeling, which is that you have always been and always will be their person. But throughout and in the midst of this soul shock, this isn't always easy to understand. It's not always apparent to us. And it makes sense because when all appearances and everyone around us is telling us that this person is gone and that we would be crazy for continuing to want them, to think about them, to love them, which of course we can't stop doing, we begin to feel ourselves questioning, doubting, questioning ourselves, sometimes even our own sanity for continuing to desperately want and love this person in spite of their absence to be so hung up on them. And as a result, this can cause us to feel very alone. If you are a twin flame, it's very unlikely you would have encountered many other twin flames or twin flame couples up until that point in your life because we as twin flames decide to incarnate in unawakened spaces. Essentially, we are scattered across the globe. And that is why we so often only find one another through these YouTube videos, through platforms, through YouTube communities, through online spaces. Because in the physical world, by divine intention, we have separated ourselves because the work we are doing through the unconditional love we are learning and then sharing through this connection is awakening not only ourselves and our twin flames, but entire families, entire communities. 
We are beacons of light and hope to everything and everyone around us. And I'm just saying that because I feel that someone listening feels very lost and very alone right now. And I am deeply connecting with you and what you are feeling in this moment. And I want you to know, A, what you are experiencing is completely normal and natural. How could you react otherwise? How could you feel anything besides a deep level soul shock and paralysis because of the loss of this deep level soul connection? Don't be so harsh with yourself in processing these energies because they are very intense. And at the same time, B, what you also need to know is the work you are doing is so much greater than you. By transforming yourself, by healing yourself, by expanding and growing and committing to this journey, even through these dark and seemingly impossible times, you are committing to the elevating of not only yourself, but of planetary consciousness. So never forget the important nature of your work. I am so proud of you for how far you've come, even for finding this video, even for beginning to commit to understanding yourself within this connection, understanding what is taking place. You are awakening and everything is unfolding in perfect divine timing. I know that was a bit of a tangent, but I just got this very strong urge that someone needed to hear that. Thank you so much for joining me through this video, through these podcasts I share here on YouTube. Know that each and every one of you beautiful souls out there listening are co-creators with me on this channel, co-creating this information alongside me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you again in the next podcast.